Back in 2009, the very first video that I produced was this jig for lining your table saw blade and fences to 90 degrees. Well, now that I have a new HD video camera, and also because I think this jig is pretty cool, I wanted to go back and make a new version of this jig, and uh, hopefully the uh, dial indicator face will show up a little bit better in HD. So here we go. So I've got a piece of scrap lumber that I'm going to use for this jig that's about two inches thick. Now if you didn't have any lumber that was two inches thick, you could always glue together two pieces of wood. I need to make a rabbit in this board so that when I attach the dial indicator, the plunger of the dial indicator is further down, and you'll see why later. With the plunger of the dial indicator pushed all the way in and near the edge of the board, we'll go ahead and mark a spot for the hole. Go ahead and make a mark for a hole near the bottom so that this hole lines up directly underneath the plunger. Off to one side, mark for a second hole the same distance from the bottom. Use a set of calipers and make sure that the screws are sunk to the same depth. Now I'm ready to attach the dial indicator to the jig, but ignore this first hole. That was a mistake. Now with your jig on a flat surface like a granite surface plate, take your square and slide it into the jig so that the square is in line with the body of the jig and is making contact with both the plunger and the bottom screw. If your square is only making contact with the bottom screw and not the plunger, then you need to sink your screws further into the body of the jig. Now all you need to do is zero the dial indicator phase. Using the jig is really simple. All you need to do is take your jig after it's been zeroed at 90 degrees and slide it into the side of your saw blade. If your dial indicator needle does not read zero, then that means your blade is not at 90 degrees. So all you need to do is to adjust the blade angle until it reads zero on the dial indicator phase. Right there. So aside from being very accurate and very fast, this method is also a lot more convenient than using a square pushed up against the side of the blade. As I'm making my adjustments to the table saw blade angle, I can actually see the changes directly on the dial indicator phase. Whereas uh, using a square, I have to bend down in front of the saw push the square up against the side of the table saw blade and, and look for light in between the table saw blade and the square. I used to get a lot of comments from older woodworkers telling me that the dial indicator method was a lot easier on their knees and on their back because they didn't have to squat down in front of their table saw and squint for the light in between their table saw blade and their square. The same method could also be used to check your joiner fence for square. And if my fence happens to be out of square, I can make my adjustments to my positive stop while looking directly at the needle on the dial indicator phase. And if you happen to have a router table with a tilting fence, you can also use this jig to make sure that your fence is a perfect 90 degrees as well. Well, I realize this is woodworking and the high level of accuracy that comes along with using a dial indicator isn't always necessary. But like I mentioned, there are other benefits that come along with using this technique. For example, speed and ease of use. I also know that there are some woodworkers that don't like adjusting their table saw blade out of 90 degrees because of the hassle involved in getting it back to a perfect 90. Well, if you use this technique, there's no need to worry about it. Thanks for watching.